Okay, well, let's see how this can be applied to something quite different than insurance, but um, our lotto. Now, I don't know how many of you pay, play the lottery or play it on a regular basis, but in the game Lotto Texas, players purchase a ticket for a dollar. You select six numbers from 1 to 54. Six balls are drawn from 54. If the player's chosen numbers match three, four, five, or six of the six ball, he receives a payout. Okay, so we're going to use this information to calculate the expected value. Um, now, we're looking at this from your perspective, not from the lottery standpoint. So when you purchase a ticket, this is going to be event one. Event one is you purchase a ticket. The probability that you purchase a ticket is 100% or one. So you're going to take the negative $1 times 1, and you get a negative dollar. If you get 3 out of 6 numbers, this is event number 2, you get a $3 guarantee, and the probability is 1 over 75. 75. So you get $3 at a probability of 1 over 75. And again, I would not convert these to decimals until you actually do your calculation. Now this is negative and this is going to be positive. So with rounding, this turns out to be 4 cents. Event number three is if you get four out of six numbers and the cash payout is $50 and the odds are one over 1,526. So you've got your $50 times one over 1,526. And again, when you do the calculations, and these are approximates I'm rounding, this is 0.0. .0 three cents. Event four, if you get five out of six, you're going to win an estimated two thousand dollars, but the odds are much higher. So this becomes two thousand dollars times one over eighty nine six seventy eight which again is approximately two cents. And then in our final category, our final event is if you get all six numbers. So that jackpot is $14.75 million. Okay, so that's going to be, I'm going to have to write a little bitty here. $14 million, $14,750 times 1 over 28827100 And that would be approximately 57 cents. Okay, so to get your expected value, we just add all these. So 1 plus, 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 plus. And so your expected value is going to be a negative 34 cents. Okay, so what that means is if for every dollar you spend on a lotto ticket, your expectation should be that you lose 34 cents. That is the expected value. Now, if you buy one ticket, is that what's going to happen? 
No, you may not hit any numbers. Okay. Who knows what it is? Okay. All right. So, how much money should should you expect to win if you purchase 100 lotto tickets? Okay. So, let's see. Each ticket the expected value is a negative 34 cents. So 100 tickets would be negative 0 0.34 times 100, which is a negative $34. So you should expect to lose $34. Now, once again, is that what's going to happen? And that's still a relatively small sample. Um, but that, this is why I don't play the lotto. Unless everybody I know is playing it, and I'm not going to be the only one who doesn't win, so I'll pitch in. Okay. All right. Let's talk about gambling. A lot of stuff dealing with probability and odds deals with gambling. And again, this is the more informed you are, the more you'll either stay out of the casinos or at least uh, be smart about it. Okay. A casino makes money because the games are set up so that the, they have the house advantage or the house edge. That means that the expected value is that the casino is going to make money and you are going to lose money. Okay. So a roulette wheel. It has, you can't see this, it copied awfully dark. It has 38 numbers, 18 black, 18 red, 0 and double 0 are green. If a player bets a dollar on red and the wheel lands on red, the player wins a dollar. If the player bets one dollar on red and the wheel lands on black or green, the player loses a dollar. So what is the house edge? Okay, well, there, since there is not even, because it's of 18 black and 18 red, it's those two green ones that, that cause us into, gives us a problem. Okay, so let's talk about the profit made by the casino. The value of a not red to the casino, this is where they make money. They keep the dollar. So they get a dollar and the probability of it not red, there are 20 out of the 38 that are not red. So this is the revenue brought by the casino. You lose, they win. So you lose. Okay. The value of red to a casino if you win is negative a dollar. They lose that dollar. And the probability of a red is there are 18 red out of the 38 numbers. Okay, so the house edge on this, if you do the multiplication, is 0 0.52, and we're dealing in dollars and cents. So that is 52 cents. So they are going to gain, oops, and there's a zero in there, I forgot, whoops. So they are going to gain 0 0.052, or roughly five cents, for every dollar gambled on red. So again, know that there's, a, there's always a little edge, and um, they're not going to put a game out there that they don't have the edge on. All right, and our last topic about on this is the gambler's fallacy, and we've talked about this before, um, but this formalizes a little, a little bit. The gambler's fallacy is, all right, well, if I've lost 20 hands in a row, it's my turn. Next one is going to be a winner, and that is not the case because, again, flipping a coin or rolling a die, every bit of this, these are independent events. What's happened before has nothing to do with what's going to happen in the future. So um, a, 
a streak of bad luck, you're not due for good luck. It's just it just is what it is. Okay, so every time we flip a coin, the probability that the coin lands on a heads is a 50%. They are independent events, so the probability of a subsequent flip is not affected by what has happened before. Okay. So let's see this. When considering every possibility, possible five flip combination, which is more likely, all heads or them mixed up? Well, the answer is, you know, you want to look at this and say, okay, well, I've gotten five heads. I have to have a tail next. But that's not the way it works. Again, because each of these probabilities are the same. So let's look at that and see if we can look at the probability of head, 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 head. Okay, well we have to do the probability of a head. Times 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 the probability of a head. Well, all of these are one half. If I do my multiplication, 2 to the fifth power is 32. If you look at the other one, the probability of head, tail, tail, head, tail, then you have to find the probability of a head probability of a tail, tail, which again we know the probability for a head or a tail is one half. Which is one over thirty two. So the probabilities of both of these are the same. So to answer the question, the probabilities are the same. Same for these two events. Okay, so what is the probability that person A flips a, a tail? Well, we have to find another probability of a tail which is one half. What is the probability that person B flips a tail? It's one half. Each event is independent. What happened before has nothing to do with what, with what happens on the next time. Same thing here. Getting a head after a head, after a head, after a head, after a head. The probability does not change if they flip back and forth. Okay, that's the end of 7C.